Okay, so let's recap what we have done so far. So we saw last time that we can create particles in interacting quantum field theory by operating with this operator <coughs> on the vacuum. Okay, and that uh, some normalization here. And that gives us single particle state P. And these were uh, in states, it does not matter so much for single particle states, uh, but you can keep this if, if you wish. Okay. And um, yeah, where A in dagger P is equal to 1 over square root of Z. Okay, we will talk more about this factor Z later, okay. but for now I will not say much. Okay, so, that was the definition of A in dagger. And just to remind you, this quantity is what we called as square root of z over 2 pi 3 halves. Okay. So, um, okay, one more thing we had argued that this object is a constant. So, you can go back and see how we had argued this thing and then you can ask some simple questions similar to uh, uh, this one. So, you could uh, make some questions for yourself, you could ask what you can say about this quantity. Okay? So, instead of omega here meaning the vacuum here, suppose I take both the bra and the cat to be the single particle state. Then what can you say about uh, this matrix elements making a similar an analysis uh, as we did for this one. Okay? And you could also ask um, for this object. Okay, just for fun you should do this okay? because you could s uh, run similar arguments and and try to arrive at some conclusions. Okay, so, after this recap, let us start something new. So, recall in uh, free field theory, not only that we had an operator A dagger which acting on vacuum created single particle states, we also had an operator A a of k okay, with some momentum here with which if you acted on a single particle state of momentum k. So, here sorry I want to write p and this one I will keep k. Okay. So, you take a single particle state with momentum k act with an operator a p and I am right now in free theory. then you recall that that would kill that particle and give you vacuum. Okay? So, the, uh, you recall that these are annihilation operators. So, they remove particles. So, if you recall you will get delta q p minus k meaning it will kill the particle only if the momentum p is same as momentum um, Sorry. So, it will kill uh, it will kill a single particle state okay, and it will leave behind the vacuum and this is the coefficient which hits only when p equal to k and there was this normalization factor. Okay. So, um, just a second. 
ओके नाउ वी वुड लाइक टू हैव सच एन ऑपरेटर इन आवर इंटरेक्टिंग थियोरी आल्सो सी वी हैव लर्न हाउ टू क्रिएट पार्टिकल्स ओके वी नो हाउ टू क्रिएट पार्टिकल्स आउट ऑफ वैक्यूम बट नाउ वी आल्सो वांट टू किल द पार्टिकल्स ओके जस्ट लाइक वी डिड इन फ्री थियोरी ओके सो लेट्स रिपीट व्हाट वी डिड फॉर द केस ऑफ ए इन डैगर सो वी टेक आवर इंस्पिरेशन फ्रॉम फ्री थियोरी okay and then we mimic the steps and then we will eventually arrive at an operator a in okay that's the goal which will uh, kill the particles so here is a simple exercise you can you should show that in free real scalar field theory A P is given by this expression. Del not. So this is a time derivative, which acts both ways. The way I had defined earlier in the previous or previous to previous lecture. And here you have a complex conjugation. Okay, you can show this explicitly, or you can also Uh, convince yourself that this is mm, just a second that this is correct because where is it here no not this one Hmm. Okay, this one. So you see, you have you have in free theory a dagger of p is given by this expression. Okay. So if I take a, a dagger on both sides, that will give you a of p. Okay. That minus i will become plus i because you have to do a complex conjugation. f p will become f p star and of course that's not changed this del not and phi dagger is phi is because it's a real scalar field okay so remember phi is an operator so phi dagger when you put a dagger on both sides you'll get a phi dagger but because it's a real scalar field you'll get phi dagger equal to phi so the only change will be this sign will change it will become plus i and there will be a complex conjugation here and that is what i am claiming that that uh, this expression you are going to get okay but nevertheless you can try doing it explicitly if you wish and um where let me write this expression Two by three halves, one over two omega p, and then e to the minus i omega p t minus p dot x, and as always, omega p is p square plus m p square. Okay, that's the physical mass, and this um, f star. del not phi is f star del not phi minus del not of f star times phi okay 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 now we are going to make use of this so uh again we will proceed in a fashion similar to that um for a dagger okay and we will write
Yeah, I think I should have. Okay, I jumped a little bit. Yeah. So, you show that this is true in free theory. Okay. And then we will define also, um, how should I do it? Okay. So, sorry, this is not going to be very nice looking. So, now we will define a p with a subscript t. Okay, you remember that when we went to uh, interacting theory the same object the a dagger in that case which was similar here except for the star and sign of i. Okay, that object depended on, on time explicitly. Okay, it was not time independent and as, as it was for free theory. So, the same thing is going to happen here as well. In this case you will find that if you look at this expression i d cube x f p star t x and this double sided time derivative operator acting on phi, then in this in, in interacting theory this will turn out to be time time dependent. Okay, that is why I have put a subscript t on a okay, where all these uh, f p and omega p and these things are the same. So, that is something you can convince yourself uh, uh, based on what we had done in previous case. And now we proceed in the similar fashion and take the following. So, I will take a p with subscript t and act this with this on a single particle state of momentum k, okay, where k is really k in, okay, but it does not matter k in is same as k out as far as single particle states are concerned. Now, this again I will insert a complete set of uh, bases. These are basically in states which I am going to insert. So, this is same as left hand side and now I am inserting a complete set of bases. Okay. These are all in states which includes ground and single particle states and multi particle states. Okay. So, what happens to this object? This I can write as so, now I will take this expression of A T P from here and I will put in here. Okay. So, I get I times integral d cube x f p t x star this double sided time operate uh, time derivative and this okay okay good so again as before i will use the following that phi of x where this x stands for this okay when i write x without a without a arrow symbol it means four vector so this is really this so phi of x is equal to e to the i p dot x where p is a momentum operator phi 0 e to the minus i p dot x okay so using that i can write i integral d cube x f p star okay what should i write no i, I should not be writing every okay it's fine so let's um, so let's look at this object this what is that it will become e to the i p dot x phi 0 e to the minus i p dot x get k. Okay. Earlier in the case of a dagger we had vacuum instead of a single particle state here that is the only difference uh, we see at this stage. So, what is this object? 
this is e to the minus i this acting on ket k will give you momentum k dot x and this will give you e to the i p alpha dot x. Okay. These are complex numbers and you get alpha phi 0 k which is same as e to the minus i sorry I will keep a plus i e to the i. So, p alpha it will give you omega alpha that is the energy of the state alpha minus this one that is um, omega of k that is the energy of this single particle state of momentum k t minus i p alpha minus k dot x. Okay, so, now if I substitute this I get a t dagger uh, sorry a t acting on k is equal to summation over alpha i d cube x f p star t x okay, del naught acting both sides. So, that is here and now um, here is the time dependent part of this quantity. Okay. For this quantity the entire time dependence is contained in this exponential factor okay, here. So, that is what I am writing here e to the i omega alpha minus omega k t. Then I will write this part Okay. Then I should write. Uh, okay, I have missed writing this factor here. Okay, then I have this factor, alpha phi zero, cat k, and then, and then finally, this cat alpha. Okay, that is all. Okay, so now we should evaluate this and um, it will be quite easy to show that um, this this quantity let us look at this quantity okay. that this f p f p star del del naught uh, and this exponential it will give you let me write it down what it will give f p star t x ok that is an exercise you should do e to the i omega alpha minus omega k t okay, that is simple to there is nothing special nothing difficult in this. So, you will be able to arrive at the following result. So, f p star omega alpha minus omega k minus omega p e to the i omega alpha minus omega k t. Okay. Let me remind you again omega p is the energy of uh, I mean omega p is p square plus m p square where p is coming from the argument of this a. Omega k is the energy of the state k cat k and omega alpha is the energy of state cat alpha over which we are summing. Okay, so, that is something you should be able to show, uh, show. and then um, let us see. So, that is about the time dependence okay. or the entire time dependence is in here now in this expression k f p also f also uh, depends on time. Now, let us look at the x dependence. The spatial dependence is quite simple you have an exponential function here
okay so that that contributes to time dependence then another uh, sorry uh, space dependence and then other space dependence comes from this fp star okay but that space dependence is also trivial it is again uh, an exponential so let me show you here here it's just e to the plus i p dot x okay so that exponential and this exponential here will combine and you can integrate over this d cube x and that will give you a dirac delta function okay so that is what i want to collect just a second yeah i want to add one more step before that so it will be easier so here this is i over so i'm just writing the expression of fp now i so so that i can make the space dependence explicit here omega alpha minus omega k minus omega p then this exponential and uh, so there will be a time dependence coming from f of p star which will give you e to the i omega alpha minus omega k plus omega p t okay it's e to the i omega p t why because here f p has e to the minus i omega p t so if you take f star it will become e to the i plus i omega p t and that's why i have written e to the plus i omega p t okay and then you still have the space dependence which is e to the minus i p dot x let's go back here you have e to the plus i p dot x because minus i times minus is plus i and when you take a complex conjugate it becomes e to the minus i p dot x okay and now i can do um, an integral over x so this is one place where you have x and that's the other place so let's integrate over it so you'll get e to the, um, so if i combine these two exponentials i will get p e to the minus i p alpha minus k plus p okay because there is a minus i here i will be pulling out minus i so it will be p alpha minus k plus p and when i integrate this i will get a delta functions so let me write the delta function integral d cube x e to the minus i p dot x times e to the minus i p alpha minus k dot x okay this will give you 2 pi cube it's a integral over 3 volume so it will give you a 2 pi cube times delta cube p alpha minus k plus p good so i have taken care of the x uh, integral and now i will just put this result and write down the expression of at acting on k okay let's see what do we get so substituting b we get at p acting on ket k is equal to summation over alpha i times 2 pi cube delta cube p alpha minus k plus p okay remember delta functions are the easiest things to integrate over they make everything very easy and exponentials are also very easy to ex integrate over because they give you dirac delta functions okay so check that you are going to get this let's see yeah so till now i am just so you have um, i have taken care of delta uh, x dependence that gives me a delta function 
and now I am writing the remaining factors. And here is the time dependence. Okay. So, as in the previous case, we again also have a uh, sum over all possible in states, okay, which form the basis. Now, um, look at this exponential. Okay, we will do the same trick as before. We will uh, take t equal to minus capital T times 1 minus i epsilon where epsilon is positive a small number but positive and I will take t going to infinity. Okay? So, that is what I am going to do. So, what happens to this exponential? This exponential becomes uh, exponential becomes e to the i omega alpha minus omega k plus omega p and because of this minus sign it you get a minus here times e to the um, so this is minus times minus that is a plus so it is a i epsilon t now i epsilon t times this i will give you minus minus capital T minus uh, minus epsilon t times this factor. that is correct. Okay, so, this is what you are going to get. Okay, so, you have t going to infinity, epsilon is positive. Okay, there is a minus sign here. Now, this object, this exponential, the most dominant term okay, in, this, in this sum, sum over alpha will arise from that alpha for which omega alpha takes the least value. right? Because if omega alpha takes large values because omega alpha is always positive and if it takes uh, large values then this becomes even larger positive number. So, the damping becomes even larger. Okay? So, if omega alpha is large the damping is large. So, those omega alpha or those alpha which have larger energies will contribute even lesser or rather they will uh, damp out even faster in t going to infinity limit. So, which one will give you the do most dominant contribution? The one which has the least uh, energy and the state that has least energy is the vacuum it has energy equal to 0. Okay? So, the most dominant contribution to this sum will arise from vacuum. Okay? So, most dominant contribution arises from equal to vacuum. Okay? Why? Because omega alpha is equal to 0 for the vacuum state. Okay? So, all others will de uh, decay faster when you take T to be large. Okay? So, we should focus then only on the vacuum and not worry about other terms because they are going to be irrelevant in T going to infinity limit because this is the most dominant one. Okay? So, let us work with the most dominant one. So, I am not going to sum over all other states, I am just going to look at uh, alpha equal to omega, but if alpha is equal to omega, then p alpha is also zero, right? The momentum is zero for the uh, vacuum state, so you get delta cube p minus k, okay? And here you get uh, here you get uh, omega alpha is zero, so you get minus omega k minus omega p, but delta cube p minus k will force p is k and p to be equal which means that this will contribute minus 2 omega p. Okay? This is 0, 
these two will together contribute minus 2 omega p okay because of that you can do because you have a delta function right because delta function will hit only when k is equal to p so you you can identify k equal to p here and and here the omega alpha is 0 omega p and minus omega k you can replace by omega p again because for the same reason you have a delta function so this becomes e to the 0 right because this this thing in this round brackets vanishes okay. this is ensured by delta function so omega p minus omega p is 0 so e to the 0 that contributes a factor of 1 this gives you a factor of minus 2 omega p that is delta cube of p minus k okay and and something else and this is of course vacuum and this k will also be forced to be p okay because of this delta function so if i put all these things together i will get um Yeah, let me write it down. Another thing that I have to use is, so this is what I will use and the other thing that I will use is the following, omega phi 0 p, that is what is in here. Okay, This thing is um, root z over 2 pi 3 halves complex conjugate of it. Okay, earlier we had shown I think let us see where is the z. Let us look at z. Yeah. So, here the vacuum was on the right and ket p was on the oh sorry bra p was on the left. Okay. So, vacuum on the right and let us see what do we have now. Yeah. Now, vacuum is on the left. Okay. So, this is a complex conjugate of the previous thing. So, that is why I put complex conjugate, but we will see later that z is real. So, I can write simply this thing. Okay. So, now if I take this and substitute in here together with all the other things that I have mentioned, I get the following. I get the following. Okay, another thing, let us see here. Mm. Yeah. So, this factor gives you a factor of 1 over 2 pi 3 halves. Okay. So, 1 2 pi 3 halves coming from there. Uh, from this factor, then you have 1 over 2 pi 3 halves coming from here. So, these two together will make 1 over 2 pi cube and that will cancel this 2 pi cube. So, there will be no factors of 2 pi cube. Okay, so, no factors of 2 pi cube. This i times i will give you minus 1, i square is minus 1, but then you have a minus sign coming from here, right? because this is minus 2, this will give you minus 2 omega p. right? So, that minus signs sign gets cancelled. So, there is no minus sign and there is no factor of 2 pi, 2 pi cubes. Okay, so, those two are gone and, um, and you have a factor of 1 over 2 omega p here and a factor of 2 omega p here, this is square root. So, that will give you a factor of square root of 2 omega p. Okay. So, now I can write the final result. Um, A of P with so no factors of I or two pi and straightforwardly, yeah. So the 
only things are left is 2 omega p. I just explained why you will get square root of 2 omega p and there will be a delta function okay. and then of course, square root of z coming from here and then your vacuum. Okay. Now, we will define 1 over square root of z. I am taking the square root of z to the left times this operator as a in. Okay. And with this, we get a in. So, I am taking root z to the left and using this definition, a in of p acting on a single particle state single particle state ket k, this gives me 2 omega p times delta q p minus k vacuum. So, you see we have found an operator that kills a single particle state. So, that kills particles and creates vacuum okay? and this is same as what you had found in the case of free field theory. So, A in P annihilates particles. Okay, we will continue our discussion in the next video and see how to create more than one particle, uh, states with more than one particle and also given a state with more than um, one particle, how to uh, remove those particles using a in operators. Okay, so see you in the next video.